Good morning, folks. We're going to watch plasma filaments dancing on both the north and south incoming limbs to start here. It's an aesthetic sight, but we've also got geo-effective space weather, a mystery at a globular cluster, plasma instabilities within a nova. We look at the long history of man's best friend, and the climate discourse gets some interesting sprinkles. We're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun was a quiet one. The coronal holes look smaller, more spread out, and patchier than they did about two weeks ago. But some of their solar wind is still managing to intensify geospace. This morning, purple on the left and yellow on the right, plasma speed of the solar wind stream is on the rise again. Modest levels only right now, but we have seen another geomagnetic instability event overnight, so we will be watching the stream and the magnetic field today. Let's start off with man's best friend. Here's the short version of the long story. The oldest confirmed pet dog is via burial site remains 14,000 years ago. Others had suggested it could be over 30,000 years of our partnership with pups, but it was mostly speculation. Here we find definitive proof now that our companions have stuck by us through both the Lake Mungo and Gothenburg magnetic excursions, the solar events that changed our planets within them, the younger driest, harshest part of the Ice Age too. Our teammates through hardship and disaster, just like today. Now let's get Chandra up here for a delightful little space mystery. One of the globular clusters towards the center of the galaxy, which you can't even pick out yet here on our zoom, has a star that can't make up its mind. Okay, now we're getting down into the little blue compact monster, and within that monster are a number of stars that are extremely powerful, shining in X-rays as gorgeously as the entire system sits nestled in the cosmic clouds. But there's a problem. One of these stars was first acting and giving off the emission indicative of a close-in binary system with older stars. Then out of nowhere, the thing began acting like a single millisecond pulsar. And just as quickly as it had happened, a few years later now it's back to acting like a small old binary. The star in question in this globular cluster is CX1 or perhaps stars in the cluster. And no, I don't have any more of a clue as to what's happening there as the scientists do. So let's move from a cosmic mystery to cosmic explosion modeling. The remnants and interaction of the nebula, nice Raleigh-Taylor plasma instability seen in the brighter layers where the shocks travel outward. The paper subject matter is slightly more complex and there's a ton of plasma physics in there, but at the same time, it's kind of nice to take some time to closely examine some of these simulation outputs. It's like trying to model a star-sized ocean that exploded. Gorgeous, and now we're scaling up the mapping from particle interactions to large-scale structure. They are getting very, very good at mapping magnetic fields in the sky. I just can't help but wonder why they always end up looking like pressure maps for weather here on Earth. I mean, it's not like there's anything electromagnetic about the pressure cells on Earth, right? See what I did there? Three stories rolled up into one in our top story, and it's all about the climate. First, we recall last month that we learned that the Arctic warming was responsible for a huge chunk of climate change, and that it wasn't CO2 but a weakening ozone. Well, now they're trying to pull back on the Arctic effects on the lower latitude jets and wave trains. It was a fair hypothesis, but it appears something else is driving jet strength versus instability. By the way, there's over a hundred papers on the solar forcing of the jets. But now speaking of the Arctic, uh-oh. Remember when NASA and Yale were describing the cold climate bomb ready to be unleashed by the Beaufort Gyre? The freshwater release that they're saying maybe would not shut down the Atlantic circulation. Well, maybe it won't, but maybe it will. Because it turns out the models blaming meteors or volcanoes for the younger driest still cannot hold up mathematically. But freshwater melt is the wrench in the engine and the cascading effects taking out the entire northern hemisphere, then beginning in on the southern hemisphere through the interactions with the South Atlantic and South Pacific. Well, that works in the models mathematically just fine. Speaking of the South, in Antarctica, they are continuing their side of things too. It's been five years since the scientists from the University of Texas showed it was actually underwater volcanoes doing that melting via ocean heating from directly below and over the long term. All it amounts to is cooler, fresher water making ready for a major shift back to solid state once again. Folks, the Woods Hole team was indeed in on this one as well with Amherst. When they tell you the cold climate bomb might not shut down the Atlantic and cause an ice age, I'm sorry, you just can't buy their theater of optimism. This planet, she knows what she's doing. It's the humans that don't. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 420 AM in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. 
Be safe, everyone.